What is up, Long Army? It's your boy Royce. I got a really special guest with me today. This is my uh, my little dog, my little Yorkie, Patsy. Patsy, why don't you say hi? You know, I thought, why not just make this video a little more interesting by using Patsy's cuteness? And I actually uh, had her uh, sign a waiver before this that um, she, you know, wouldn't get any of the profits from this video. Isn't that right, Patsy? Isn't that right? Um, but you know, actually though, like this is this is a thing. Try not to get money. Um, <laughs> I can't even say this is a straight face. Don't let money get between you and family. That only complicates things, okay? That that really ruins relationships. So really, I'm doing a good thing for us, huh, Patsy? Isn't that right? I'm doing a good thing for us. She really likes to chill in my arms, and I thought, why not just have her, like, you know, chill in my arms during a video? Um, it's kind of like me bringing my dog to work, because, you know, as you guys know, me making YouTube videos um, is my day job um, outside of being a medical student. Yeah, why not? Let's just do this, and, and let's see how um, long she wants to chill here. And then if she wants to go down, I'll, I'll let her down later. But, um... Yeah, so uh, this video I wanted to talk about uh, a milestone that I've recently reached, which is finishing my first year of my PhD. And I just wanted to talk about how the PhD has compared, you know, pros and cons versus the MD and just talk about my thoughts so far in my life right now. So as you guys may or may not know, I am an MD PhD student at UPenn. And uh, what that means is I do both the MD and the PhD degrees in about eight years, four years each. And I've uh, officially done three years so far. So I've done two years of medical school and I've done one year of my PhD. I'm still in the PhD phase. Uh, there's a lot of uncertainty. Um, so, you know, I might have two more years. I might have four more years. We'll just see how it goes, I guess. Yeah, so far I've been really liking the PhD. I can't say for sure if I like the PhD more than the MD. I feel like, you know, when I talk to my classmates, they tend to have one answer or the other. They tend to say that they really like the MD part. They really like to see patients and they like it a lot more than the PhD. And if, you know, they had to choose one or the other, they would definitely drop the PhD. Um, and on the flip side, I've had a lot of friends also say that the PhD is definitely, you know, the most desirable part. They just love science. If they didn't have to see patients, they wouldn't mind sacrificing that part of their career. Um, but for me personally, I think, honestly, I like both. They both complement each other very well. And, um, you know, I'd be happy maintaining both. That's, you know, I guess my career goals right now. And, um, you know, I can't say that I like one more than the other. They both have their pros and cons. You know, they're both great and they're both not so great in a lot of ways, um, in their own respective ways. Uh, you know, I just think I'm very lucky to be able to enjoy both sides um, of this coin. So um, I just wrote a few notes here on my uh, iPad, just a few bullet points. So I'll just go down the list here. So, um, you know, one thing that I've really liked about the PhD so far is that the schedule is very flexible. So when it comes to the MD, when it comes to medical school, um, as you guys may know, it is a very, you know, structured, a very regimented kind of curriculum. You and your 100 classmates all take the exact same classes at the exact same time. So in your first years of medical school, when you're doing all your lectures, you guys all show up to the same lectures. You guys all show up to the same, um, you know, workshops, things like that. Later, when you do your clinical rotations in the hospital, you have to do the same surgery clerkship. You have to do the same, you know, internal medicine or ob -GYN clerkship. They tell you exactly what to do, when to do it. Um, and you don't really have much say outside of that. Um, in the PhD, however, it's a very flexible kind of schedule. So, so far I've had um, some, some kind of undergrad type classes, material science, electrical engineering, these types of classes that I have to take for my bioengineering PhD. Those have set class times. And of course they have like, you know, exams and homeworks, things like that. But that's only like, you know, a few times out of the week that I have to like really be at certain spots. And outside of that, I can just choose to do my own thing, which is, you know, actually pretty amazing. So I've seen some PhD friends of mine who um, actually show up to the lab like super late, 1 p.m. and they'll actually stay in lab until like 9 or 10 p.m., which is technically eight or nine hours per day. For me, I tend to stick to the, you know, eight to five, nine to five kind of schedule. And um, I do that mostly because my wife and also my friends, um, you know, also follow that schedule. It, it wouldn't make much sense, you know what I mean? It, our, our, our free time would not overlap very well. Just the typical work hours, Monday through Friday. But, uh, you know, outside of that, um, I have a lot of freedom. So I've actually been traveling a lot, uh, just nearby places outside of Philly. So I'll go, you know, take a train or drive somewhere nearby. Or I've been able to take, um, you know, the plane and, and spend a few days or, or a few weeks in other places. Like for my honeymoon, I went to Europe. You know, we've gone to like India for a wedding. Uh, we just went to Europe recently. We went to uh, Greece. Um, just to like see some friends and my PI, of course, she's not going to be strict on me. She's not going to be asking me like, oh, what were your hours this week? You know, I don't have to log my time or clock in or clock out. But on the flip side, this has been really bad, honestly, to have a not so structured schedule because now I have to, I, I now have to like organize these schedules by myself. Oh, and you can see my dog's getting a little hot. So I might, I might drop her actually. You getting a little hot? 
I think she's getting a little hot, so I'm gonna set her down. Well, actually, is she hot? Yeah, she is. Okay, I'm gonna set her down, but this is fun, huh? Um, so what was I saying? The biggest downside to this is you have to hold yourself accountable, which is really hard to do. So with the MD, obviously, you have to show up at the hospital at certain times. You have to take exams at certain times pretty frequently. And that's how you're, you're held accountable. It's the school kind of makes you uh, productive. You're forced to be productive. But when it comes to the PhD, you know, grades don't really matter. Exams don't really matter as much. It is up to you to be productive. And that is actually really hard. That's part of the responsibility that we are given as PhD students. We, we're expected to be on top of our own time. You're the one pushing your project forward. You're the only person really working on your research and you have to plan your own experiments. You have to plan when to go in and what things to do. And from that perspective, it becomes actually really hard. And then planning, you know, in terms of weeks and then in planning in terms of months, what are your longitudinal goals? Uh, these are really important skills that you just have to learn in grad school, otherwise you will not succeed. So all in all, I think I've been doing a pretty good job of, you know, balancing getting actually good productive results um, with, you know, taking time off and enjoying my life. And, um, you know, I just hope my PI doesn't look on my YouTube channel and see, you know, the many hours of Zelda gameplay videos that I've been uploading recently. I swear that's not me playing, that's someone else. I just, I just voice them over. Now I want to talk about failure and delayed gratification. So obviously when it comes to medicine, gratification comes pretty, pretty immediately. When it comes to medical school, you know, you finish an exam, Literally like the next day, you'll find out that you passed. When you're doing a surgery to you know, fix a structural problem, remove a tumor, for example, you see the results pretty immediately after the surgery. These are very immediate forms of gratification. Uh, on the flip side, when it comes to the PhD, gratification comes way, way later. It is super delayed. You have this project that you are given full control of and you will not see results for many months. In my first year of my PhD, I was failing for weeks at a time. Literally, I would just show up to lab and I would just, have the expectations of my experiments failing. I would not see any positive results. And um, that's kind of just how PhD research goes. But obviously when it comes to science, you know, once you make the discoveries, then you feel great. You're like, oh, science is amazing. You know what I mean? But uh, these, these kinds of, you know, aha moments don't come very often. And uh, you just have to learn to deal with that when it comes to science. That's just a fact of science. You cannot possibly have positive results all the time. Failure happens like 99% of the time. Now, something that goes hand in hand with this is a new form of stress. So, uh, you know, believe it or not, medicine is actually really stressful, especially as a medical student, because, um, you know, in the preclinical phase, when you're taking exams all the time, I mean, you're taking exams all the time. You, you feel this stress all the time of taking the exams, waiting for the results, and just rinse and repeat, repeat the cycle, and take the next set of exams for the next topic. It's kind of terrible, actually. You're just like, like a super student. And then once you get into the hospital in your clinical rotations, um, the stress doesn't stop. Obviously, it's a very high stress job depending on your specialty that you're, you're working in, in emergency medicine, for example, you're dealing with literal emergencies. You feel adrenaline, you feel on edge for your entire shift. You're essentially a shift worker and you do a very high stress job. And on top of that, you still have exams too, um, although less frequent, but these exams still matter a ton they're not really pass fail anymore. Sometimes I, I think to myself like, wow, why did I pick such a stressful career? I just wanna chill. But um, you know, medicine just doesn't let you do that, unfortunately. Now when it comes to science, I have definitely felt a lot less stress than I did in medical school. And that's because, you know, I'm not seeing patients, you know, people's lives are not literally in my hands and I can, you know, take as many breaks as I want. I can go on vacations, I can take long weekends, spend time with my wife, spend time with my friends. And uh, you know, life's good, honestly. You know, you do feel stress, obviously, but this stress is more longitudinal. This goes hand in hand with your experiments kind of taking forever. Your stress also takes forever as well. Instead of, you know, happening within days, like with medicine, these deadlines are over the course of many weeks. You know, you might have to submit a paper. You might have to plan longitudinal experiments, which might take, you know, weeks to months. You're working on your devices, you're working on the mice, you're working on your animal models, and um, you just don't know if things are gonna work out until the very end when you collect the data and you analyze it. So that's, that's pretty stressful. Although a lot less stressful, in my opinion, than medicine, it's still very stressful and it's, it's a longer term, you know, more chronic form of stress. This stress is definitely more self-imposed. So kind of like with your schedule being more self-guided, self-directed, you have to, you know, decide your own time, decide your own experiments. This stress is kind of self-imposed like, oh, I am self-motivated to achieve these research goals. I am self-motivated to submit this paper and therefore I'm putting the stress onto myself. It's not like, you know, med school is putting the stress on you by forcing you to take all these exams. It's more on you putting the pressure on yourself like, 
oh, I want to graduate in like four years or a reasonable number of years. And I want to, you know, achieve these experiments. Now, another thing that science has versus medicine is less tangible results. You, know, you treat a patient, you see the results pretty immediately. When it comes to science, you don't really feel the results immediately. Even if you, you know, make a huge discovery, you discover a pathway for a specific disease, you know, like, so what, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, will this make a difference in patient care? Not really, unless you can translate this scientific discovery into the clinic. If you can make it into a useful device, if you can use it in diagnostics, if you can affect patient care somehow. This is a really big concept in science. And one of the major pathways for this is industry in the United States. So let's take my field as an example. If I create in the lab a very amazing neuroelectronic, it like treats blindness, it treats paralysis, things like that. I can't just put it into patients the next day. I have to go through a very rigorous FDA approval process. I have to go through clinical trials. I have to make sure the manufacturing is really tight. Things like that. This is the role that industry fulfills. You have to go through this, you know, kind of complex commercialization and, and regulation process. It's really different from the hospital. You, you, you see the results in the hospital from your surgeries. You see the results from giving medications uh, in their blood panels, um, in how they feel and how happy they are. This is a big thing in science that I've had to cope with is that, you know, your results in the lab are actually really far removed from patients, really far removed from actual, you know, impact. And so that's essentially the last bullet point I have on my iPad here. Thanks for watching. I'll, let me let me get my dog real quick. Here's my dog again. Um, I thought it'd be nice if we both said goodbye. Hope you guys found this informative and I'll see you at the next video. Say bye, Patsy. Say bye.